commemorate Juneteenth locally, I recommend first taking a look at our website. It is aahc.nc.gov. Um, and taking a look at our Juneteenth toolkit, we have a bunch of resources about how to celebrate um, and recommendations of different festivals and special events that are happening across the state. I welcome folks to uh, bring their families um, and take them along to learn and celebrate the holiday together. First of all, the lessons that we're learning from the way in which Juneteenth became something celebratory is about process. It is a process that we undergo in order to become free. And it is not something that is static. It didn't just remain a proclamation. People had to act on it, be conscious and intentional on how they would assert their right to be free. Now, I'm from California originally, and we had Juneteenth celebrations because as people migrated, African-American people migrated from Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, to California, they brought that idea of freedom with them. And if we didn't have that kind of legacy and connection, we might have forgotten what really needed to be done to maintain our state of being free, which is not just a physical freedom, but an intellectual freedom, a spiritual freedom. How are we gonna be true citizens of this country if we are not able to express ourselves as humans freely in the ways in which we celebrate our foods, our arts, culture, heritage, how we educate ourselves, the sciences that we are interested in. All of that is a part of this ongoing quest to be the best that we can be in terms of a free people in a place that doesn't recognize always that we're fully human or that we are a part of, a true integral part of this country. When you ask about how do we continue this, we tell the stories from itty bitty ones all the way up to adults. We remember, we recollect. I think that one of the visuals I get for this is Daughters of the Dust and the way Julie Dash helped people understand what it meant to be Gullah what it meant to be Geechee. And part of that was that storytelling, the narratives. And one of the things that came out was this idea of recollection, memory, tied to action happening today. Where are we today? And where do we want to be tomorrow? So for me, it makes me think about the optimism that they had when they were building these communities and building these spaces, such as Jane City in New Bern, North Carolina, uh, building these spaces where they could gather so through their sacrifice and hard work, I am proud to be an African-American woman. And because of that, I celebrate and remember their history. For me, what reminds me of Juneteenth is, is the celebration. Growing up, I went to festivals and um, cookouts and musical performances that were very much involved um, around Juneteenth and learning what I learned about Juneteenth from being in these different spaces and and the celebrations and what they were for from the time that General Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas to that expansion of celebrations and what that did for me was led me to books, different books that kind of gave a better and further and, and more in-depth um, history of Juneteenth. And because of those things, Juneteenth now to me has so much more, a much bigger place in my heart, not just because the historical, um, the, the historical nature, but the celebratory nature of Juneteenth as well. For me, when I think of Juneteenth, I think of dedication and resilience. Um, and particularly coming to mind right now, I'm thinking of the Gullah Geechee people who are found in the uh, coastal regions of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And when you look at the Gullah Geechee, uh, they took the broken English that they were uh, often heard, in some cases being taught uh, by those that enslaved them. And they took that as well as the various tribal languages that we brought over from uh, Africa and molded and created their own language, which is still being spoken to this day. Uh, so I just think it's brilliant. And if you ever want to get a sense of how African-Americans uh, sounded when they first encountered these shores, study the Gullah Geechee and appreciate it. Um, 
when I look at the resiliency for African Americans overall, uh, just having to make their own way, when I hear Juneteenth in particular, and you look at Texas, um, once emancipation was announced, there were not the federal troops in place uh, like they were on the eastern part of the, the, the nation in South Carolina, Georgia, and Virginia, et cetera. They didn't have the troops in Texas, so there was no one there to enforce it. And many say the government sent a messenger, uh, but the messenger was uh, killed en route. Uh, some say the government made a deal with the plantation owners, you know, you can reap one more uh, harvest and we'll just allow enslavement to continue. But once General uh, Granger made his way and emancipation and freedom was announced, um, the African Americans had to essentially make their own way. They had to make their own house and find their own house. They had to uh, find a way to make money to raise and support their families. They had to find a way to educate themselves. And they did that. We did that. And so uh, Juneteenth says to me, there's an ability uh, to keep getting up. And then uh, each time you get up, you're reaching a new height, a new achievement. So that's Juneteenth.